This presentation will address lung cancer. Please be sure to have your syllabus next to you so that you can take notes with reference to the syllabus dot points. Lung cancer can originate anywhere in the lungs, including the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli, and it occurs when cells in the lung become abnormal and grow in an uncontrolled way and form a mass called a neoplasm or tumour. Tumours can be benign or malignant. Benign tumours do not spread to other parts of the body, but they may interfere with other areas of the body as they grow. These tumours still need to be removed. Malignant tumours, on the other hand, spread to other parts of the body through a process known as metastases. If the spread is not stopped, it can result in death. There are a number of risk factors for lung cancer that are either non-modifiable or modifiable. The non-modifiable risk factors are those that cannot be changed. Gender is considered a risk factor because males are far more likely to develop lung cancer. Age is a risk factor that's non-modifiable because those that are aged 60 years and over are more likely to develop lung cancer. A family history uh, is a risk factor because those that have a family history are more likely to develop lung cancer. And those that have had a previous lung disease, such as lung fibrosis, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, or pulmonary tuberculosis are more likely to develop lung cancer. The modifiable risk factors are those that can be changed, and smoking is the main risk factor for lung cancer. Smokers are up to 20 times more likely to develop a lung cancer. Exposure to carcinogenic chemicals, for example asbestos and lead, that can be changed. And also air pollution. Those are all modifiable risk factors. The protective factors for lung cancer include, quite obviously, not smoking, avoiding passive smoking, use of appropriate safety measures to avoid exposure to dust and other dangerous inhalants such as asbestos. This is considered a protective factor. The sociocultural determinants of lung cancer can include education, effective health promotion strategies and a change in society's views. Smoking has been considered socially unacceptable over the last decade or so and this is largely due to the campaigns that have focused on smoking as being the major cause for lung cancer. But there is also a high smoking rate among ATSI people but this has led to targeted campaigns towards Indigenous Australians that have focused on trying to address this cultural issue. So the high ATSI smoking rates have led to targeted campaigns to reduce lung cancer mortality. And some of the more recent ones are the Ditch the Durries campaign and the Break the Chain campaign. Both of them encourage those Indigenous people to empower other people in their community to try to reduce the amount of smoking. Smoking is seen as socially unacceptable and advertising campaigns have played a role in that, as has plain packaging as well. When people see the packaging, uh, it, it makes people think twice about smoking. And also laws that have been passed to prohibit smoking in public places has greatly reduced exposure. And this is a law that affects all of the society. Some other sociocultural determinants of lung cancer include popular culture, which may have had an impact on the slight increase in smoking rates among young females. There may have been a myth perpetuated in the media about weight loss and its relation to smoking, which of course is not true, but this may account for some of the increases in female rates of smoking. But also females pursuing traditional male occupations and being um, more active in the workplace could lead to more stress, which could then lead to females smoking a little bit more um, and to present an image of control, high-profile women smoke and the link between weight control and smoking. So this is all part of society and, and a cultural myth that has been uh, put forward about weight loss and smoking. The socioeconomic determinants of lung cancer include 
uh, low SES people are more likely to be employed in jobs that involve exposure to dangerous materials such as asbestos, but also low SES people in general are more likely to smoke. So this is another aspect of, or another risk uh, in lung cancer. Uh, improved workplace safety, however, has led to a reduced exposure to carcinogenic chemicals, as has uh, the education, income and employment uh, in our society in general. Uh, a greater understanding and risk of smoking and protective behaviours has led people to think twice and choose not to smoke. If we have a look at this graph, you can see that the prevalence of smoking, uh, and it compares basically those that have high level of education with lower level of education, you can see that no post-school qualification, more likely to smoke. Unemployed, more likely to smoke. Uh, unable to work, more, more likely to smoke. So you can see that employment uh, plays, a, plays a role. Uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged, um, you can see that the lowest uh, level there, more likely to smoke, and it decreases as um, disadvantage increases. Uh, remoteness, smoking rates increase with remoteness. And the last one down there, single parents more likely to smoke. So those people that experience disadvantage, lower SES status, more likely to smoke. And of course, this links to the statistics that suggest that lung cancer is higher in those particular groups. The environmental determinants of lung cancer. Improved workplace safety codes and equipment has led to less exposure to carcinogenic chemicals. And this has been an important determinant in the reduction of lung cancer. But also, those people in remote areas are more likely to smoke. So we're seeing a higher rate of lung cancer in rural and remote areas as a result of that disparity between major cities and remote areas. Other environmental determinants of lung cancer include access to health care for those in rural and remote areas, so unable to, to receive a checkup. Um, access to doctors is, is lower in very remote areas, and seeing a GP and receiving advice uh, is something that can assist those to quit smoking. The GP is a, is a good point of contact, and if it's limited in rural areas, we're going to see more of an increase in people smoking in those areas. The groups at risk for lung cancer, obviously cigarette smokers, those that have exposure to occupational and environmental hazards, asbestos. Blue-collar occupations, more likely to smoke, those that are 50 years and over, more likely to develop lung cancer. Males are more likely to die from lung cancer than females. The ATSI people, 1.6 times more likely to die. Low SES, 1.5 times more likely to die. Rural and remote, 1.3 times more likely to die. And the overseas-born population, particularly UK and Ireland, have higher rates of smoking, and so a higher risk of developing lung cancer. Thank you very much for listening.